we're going to look at a similarly odd phenomenon as length contraction. Now we're going to look at something called time dilation. We're going to suppose that we're standing by with our clock in a frame S. We think that we're standing at rest. I'll think I'm standing at a location X naught, and so is my clock. The world line for my clock is the red dash line that I've shown here. Since it's always at location X naught, it's a vertical line. In my frame, I'll try to evaluate a time that's elapsed between two spacetime locations, P1 and P2, which are at the same location, x0, because we're at rest. I'll think that I obtain a value delta t, which on the vertical axis will be a distance, c times delta t. Now let's suppose you're moving at a frame s prime past me as I'm watching my clock tick. I'd like to know what do you say in your frame for the time it's elapsed, and we'll call that delta t prime, between these two locations, or two spacetime events, p1 and p2. Your coordinates for t prime are different from mine because of the Lorentz transformations. In fact, the time t prime, or t1 prime, corresponding to location p1, is going to equal gamma times ct1 plus beta x0. The time c times t2 prime is equal to gamma ct2 plus beta x0. Notice that the coordinate x0 is the same for both points p1 and p2, and so we're using both the value x0 in both of these two transform coordinates for t1 and t2 prime. The elapsed time in your reference frame, s prime, is equal to c times delta t prime, which is c times t2 prime minus c times t1 prime. If we put in the Lorentz transformations for t2 prime and t1 prime, then we have the expressions shown. It's the difference of these two things in parentheses. But because the x naughts are the same, this reduces to gamma ct2 minus ct1, or gamma times c delta t, where delta t is measured in my reference frame, the unprime reference frame. In other words, the, the delta t prime that you measure in the moving reference frame is gamma times delta t that I measure when I'm at rest compared to this clock. The moving reference frame observes something that's larger than delta t by this factor gamma. So it's a time that's longer than what we claim when we're standing at rest relative to the clock. The observer that's at rest relative to the clock always reports the shortest time. The observer that's moving relative to the clock always reports what's referred to as a dilated time, one that's longer than the time elapsed for the observer that's standing with the clock. There's an important thing to note here. Time dilation is not a mystery, just like length contraction is not a mystery. Its origin comes because of the admixture of space and time that occurs in the Lorentz transformations between two reference frames. Each of us, one in the frame S and one in the frame S prime, is attempting to observe two points or two space-time events, in this case, which are at the same location in our respective frames. The problem is that we both try to do this and try to obser observe two space-time points at the same location, but events that are at the same location for me are not at the same location for you. And so while each of us will say that we performed a set of co-located measurements, we must remember that location is relative. And the result is that our time, time estimates will differ. And the way this differs is that the ones moving relative to the clock always observe a dilated or longer time elapsed than the ones that are standing with the clock. That's referred to as time dilation.